How does that look? Not I'm not saying that. <laughs> You get some sense that there's a handful of stocks. Look at that. I mean, you could tie that to the market. Bang. Hey, I'm Tim, and there's my good buddy, Guy. And today on Commercial Break, we're going to talk about some iconic actors, but we're going to really, I, I think, have to dive deep, Guy, because there's, there's one of these guys uh, has got more movies to his credits than I think you've got, uh, you know, songs on your Spotify list. And the other guy, you know, a lot of people think is, is so typecast that he plays the same role in every movie. Who are the guys we're talking about? That's a great... I love what you did there. And, you know, I know the answer. I'm not going to pretend I'm guessing. So this week, birthdays for Gene Hackman, who's just brilliant. And obviously, Joe Pesci, who you're right, does get typecast. Although, if you think about it, Home Alone was not a typical Joe Pesci movie. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And, and uh, you know, some would argue that my cousin Vinny... Um, there was a lot of depth to that that character, and and I know his his co-star on that is one of your faves, Miss Tomei. Um, you know, I know you got a little bit of a crush there. And she's no, a big I fan love. Of no, break. can I tell you something? So, I absolutely love Marissa Tomei. I think she's brilliant. I think she's beautiful, and you know, I've loved everything she's in. Marissa Tomei is one of those people that could read the phone book, and I would watch it. Well, and you know, I'd watch you watching her read the phone book. So, so Hackman. Look, I mean, this guy is, uh, you know, I don't think the guy ever slept. I, I bet he's done 50 movies. And, and I could think of a handful over the years um, that, that are, I mean, again, talk about diversity of roles. He's been a good guy. He's been a bad guy. Um, uh, I'm going to give you, so my top three Hackmans, top three Hackmans are Hoosers, a uh, story about the basketball team in, in Indiana, of course. Uh, I'm going to go French Connection, which is an absolute classic. And then I'm probably going to have to either go Replacements or, one, you know, No Way Out. No Way Out, because that, that, that movie, you know, took place when we were at Georgetown. And, and uh, uh, you know, Sean Young also I have a bit of a, a soft spot for. See, by the way, Sean Young was killing it for those few years without question. And I love Kevin <laughs> Costner. And I love what you did there. So just to change it up a little bit, I'm going to give you a – Poseidon Adventure, where oh. he played sort of like a priest or a preacher that was guiding people uh, out to get out of the ship. And then he had to sort of deal with some of the demons at the end. Great movie. You should go to Blockbuster this weekend and check it out. I'm going to throw you a Mississippi Burning, which Ooh. is another. Yeah. You like Classic. that? Another. Yeah. yeah another. <laughs> another great movie. <laughs> And then I'm just going to show you, I, mean, I, I got to go Unforgiven. I mean, along with Clint Eastwood and Morgan Freeman, I think for Gene Hackman in Unforgiven was just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, I think, look, Mississippi Burning, um, it's just, it's a, look, it's an important movie socially. It's, it was a, a thriller. Um, Burning for You by Blue Oyster Cult. Where do you put that one, by the way? I mean, you know, it's I, interesting I, you mentioned. I love it. Now, love Blue it. Oyster Cult, by the way, I believe they started out by you in Long Island. Their original working name was <laughs> Soft White Underbelly, and they're two Blue Oyster Cult, basically. <laughs> Don't Fear the Reaper, and I'm Burning for You. And, you know, if they played in a concert, they'd play those two songs, each one for 45 minutes, and get off stage. One of the greatest skits of all time on Saturday Night Live, SNL. My man Will Ferrell um, and the more cowbell uh, with Chris Walken. I mean, y you know. And anyway, all right. So I don't know how we got By here. By the way, you mentioned uh, no, but you mentioned Christopher Walken. This is for a second the brilliance of Christopher Walken. I mean, not that I want to go down this road necessarily. No, we but we, we have to. He, he's he's at from you go from Deer Hunter, and then he was in Wedding Crashers. I mean, he was the father. No, he was. Crashes, he was great. And, 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 and he played really one of the scariest, creepiest roles in, in that uh, at close range with Sean and Chris Penn. I, I mean, you know, again, uh, anyway, the, you know, more more walk in than than than. In fact, um, we got the walk in blues here. So so companies um, that that have stood the test of multiple eras as both Pesci and Hackman have. In other words, we're talking about actors that have been working for, for, for five decades. Um, but, but companies that have, again, different styles, adapted on the fly, uh, are still part of the fabric of, uh, of Americana. What do you got? Well, Coca-Cola, I think you got to throw in yeah. there. I mean, Pepsi as well. I think those are two. But 
You know, you think about how they have had to adapt specifically over the last 15 years for both those companies in terms of going from just straight soft drinks to getting into many other things and remaining viable in a very competitive landscape like Pesci, Walken, and Hackman. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go McDonald's, so I'm kind of in a similar place. Again, if you think about the Golden Arches, there was a time just the novelty of going to a fast food restaurant and, and your parents letting you play in that playground where you probably were going to die. Um, and just, you know, the whole idea of spilling ketchup and, and Coca-Cola all over your station wagon, your Mercury Montego. I mean, that was what we did, and it was fun. And, and, and then it got to a place where McDonald's was the place that we would just go to after school. Like, I don't know what we were doing. I don't even know where we got our money. But, I mean, I was, I was sitting down for a nine-piece McNuggets an hour before I came home for dinner. Um, and then, of course, McDonald's has had to get into this whole, you know, wellness, health food thing. And somehow, somehow, the Golden Arches are back. So love what they're doing. Love in Detroit. Uh, companies, you know, GM and Ford that have gone bankrupt and come back. Um, and are now EV players in a new world order, I, I think, again, survived the test of times. If you had to take a Pesci role, because we didn't do him as just do, um, you know, Goodfellas to me, iconic role. But, you know, Casino, I don't think a lot of people appreciate the genius of De Niro, Sharon Stone, James Woods, Don Rickles, and obviously Joe Pesci in Casino. <laughs> I mean... Well, you've teed me up in a lot of different directions there. I mean, with Rickles. I mean, take my wife, please. Um, so no, see that I, was I think... that was that was Henny Youngman. Oh, it was but Henny that's Youngman. Okay. I see, yeah, but that's okay. I mean, Rickles was yeah. the hockey puck guy. But but if you think about that's that's right. So but if you think about Rickles, Rickles' career was not really about the bad movies he did. It really was showing up every night on the strip in Vegas and delivering that stuff. Um, and and I think you know back to Pesci. Uh, you know, I, I think I think he is underappreciated because, in fact, he, he does play uh, that abrasive. I mean, by the way, his voice. Can you think of another voice that is is whinier and nasalier and more abrasive like like that, like that guy? Done. That's a that's a great poll. Listen, I think you're right. But there are times when his voice is so piercing and frightening. That's the genius of Joe Pesci, where he can move through those roles. And I think, although he is typecast, I think he is underrated in his acting. And that's just me. But I'll give you this. You know, you mentioned in uh, Joe Pesci. Is he funny? We mentioned, you mentioned Home Alone. Well, funny, how funny? But yes. you think about the one scene when he, he, he does that smile and Macaulay Culkin sees him and that's that gold tooth. It makes me think of his easy top song. One of the lyrics is gold tooth displayed. And we talk about the genius of ZZ Top. That's a band that stood the test of time. Okay, all right. You know, the, the genius of ZZ Top is that everybody knows the band, not only just for songs like The Grange and, and uh, Sharp Dressed Man and all those cool cars from the 80s, although ZZ Top, like so many bands, um, I, I think, you know, in, in the 70s, was, I mean, two steak boogie, fool for your stockings. But the genius of ZZ Top, of course, Guy Dami, and I think you know this, uh, and we have fun with this with our, our, uh, our host, Melissa Lee, on Fast Money all the time. Everybody knows they're the band with the guys with the big, long beards. Of course, there's one guy in the band without a beard. What's his name? And that's, oddly enough, his name is Frank Beard. I mean, the irony there is not lost on me. And I think the reason he didn't grow a beard is because he knew in 2022 we'd be doing commercial break and talking about it. Well, and in fact, what he knew is as he was traveling his car from, you know, from El Paso to uh, uh, Tuscaloosa uh, is that someday he could be flying around the airports or sitting in his hotel room enjoying this kind of clever banter that we call commercial break. Guy Dami, um, on your way out, um, Joe Pesci's best role. Goodfellas, to me, you can't go wrong with Goodfellas. Again, I will give you Gene Hackman in Unforgiven, and I'll throw a Christopher Walken just for a bonus Jonas, as they say, in The Deer Hunter. That is the triumvirate of creepy yet strong actors in America, Guy. You are not a, you know, you're not a weak actor on commercial break, I'll tell you that. I'll see you somewhere, 6 p.m., walking around the airport, maybe in your hotel room. Where are we? No, we're, wherever you're traveling, that's where we are. He's Tim Seymour. I am Guy Adami, but we like to call ourselves Tim. Funny how. Commercial break. Like a clown. <laughs>